Okay, so I know that it's dark. I'm sorry. The lighting in my new place, it's beautiful to me. Uh, it's like dimly lit and stuff. It's just great. But anyway, that's not what I'm here for. I want to come make a quick video about something I was literally just thinking about. And I was talking to the father about it because it's me. I feel like I've definitely gotten much, much better, but it's still me in certain in certain instances and and not just me but I think I've experienced this with other people okay first of all I have to preface this by saying I've always been a person who's been very like I'm a giver of myself yes I might give material things every now and then if I have it whatever if I have extra stuff or you know to even be honest if I have an overflow of something that I probably won't but I'm not going to use it and I know I ain't going to use it or I don't want it anymore. Of course, it's a little bit easier to let go of. That's the material stuff. But most of the time, I'm a giver of myself. Like if I'm giving of my time to somebody or if I'm giving of my energy, my my listening, my emotions to them, I feel like those things, those things are way more important in my opinion than some than material things. Well, certain material things. With that being said, that's the type of person that... Jude slash Naeem is. So now moving along, what I was mentioning to the father and what I was saying and what I know is that I think that, sorry, loud, but I think that it can be bad. It can be a bad thing to be that way because you can take things even more personally because you're a giver of yourself in that way. Things that that um, that if you weren't so attached to it, maybe emotionally, uh, if there wasn't a part of yourself that you gave to people um, or even to a certain cause, it wouldn't it wouldn't sometimes offend you when things aren't received. But we're not even supposed to get offended. So. I was like, oh, Lord, like, I really need to get over it because some stuff I just really get offended by and everything. And I do feel like it is because I am too personally involved with certain things. Um, my heart is involved. My when I if I take the time to say something to somebody about anything, especially even if I'm if it's about the scriptures or whatever, it's because my heart is personally involved. The bad thing about that is we can take things personally when it's nothing personal. It's a spiritual thing still. And even though people see you and they comment to the things that you say, okay, so what? Like if, first of all, if it's the truth, it's going to stand whether your heart is in it or not. And so that's something that we have to be like, I have to remind myself of that. Like, Girl, what are you getting offended for or why are you mad? It's not about you. If they don't receive something that you share, okay, so what? Move on. And sometimes, and a lot of times it is becoming much easier. But with certain things, I don't know why, but with some stuff, it is a little harder to just let it go because I do feel like somebody is then personally attacking me. Um, But it's not always the case. And then sometimes it is. And even still... I shouldn't let it get to me because, okay, so you're personally attacking me at this point. How does that change? If there was some truth in anything that was shared that I said, how does it change the truth? It doesn't. So with that being said, I was talking to the father. I was like, Lord, okay, I need to, let me get up in this word because, um, first of all, when you get into the word, the word is what's going to come out of you. It's going to be what comes out of your heart in all your conversation in, in every action that you take. That's what's going to be leading and guiding you. So that's what I always want. Um, but I was just like, maybe it's like, I need to start taking, I don't know. I just kind of felt like maybe I need to stop giving of myself like that. Like, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I think I mean, just don't I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. Like, even if I'm going to give of myself, just know that, okay, if somebody doesn't receive it, that's not the end of the world. Do you know what I mean? Because just, I think that when you give it yourself, that's why you can take stuff so personally when it don't have nothing to do with you per se all the time. It's just, 
Some people don't want to hear what you have to say because they just don't agree with it or they don't believe it. That's not to say that it's not any, it doesn't make it any less true. It's just not the truth for them. And in time, if it's true, then if they're seeking God like they should, guess what? God is going to reveal it to them that this is true. And they may either remember you or they're going to at least remember, you know what? Somebody told me that. Somebody tried to tell me that. But you can have peace and you can be a person that is not offended if you can share the truth in love and then move on. Like, we have to be able to do that. And I'm so happy that I am beginning to learn how to do it, but I'm not going to lie. With certain people, especially if you've shared personal information with them and then they attack, then they say something to you and it can be like you, you sense that maybe just maybe they're re referencing things that you've spoken to them about and they use it against you well you know that can seem personal that can seem personal but even then if we understand that everything is spiritual first and that spirits will come out of people and stuff or the flesh itself will war against something that could be truthful so we have to expect that even for people that we love we have to expect it we can expect it possibly even from ourselves. Like if there's something in us that still, you know, is, is fighting off the truth. People probably should expect that it can come from us too, that, that we're, we're fighting the truth. So um, I, I hope not to be that way, but I can't say that I will never do that. I can't say I'll never do that. I'm still a work in progress and I am still seeking though. So that's the difference. Like if somebody is still seeking the father, like even if you, if somebody shares something with me, and I may go against it right away or I might say, I might not even go against it right away. Like if the father is dealing with me on something and he's telling me something specific and what you share with me is going against what the father is saying, well, I'm going to go with the father and not with you. And just because you think it's right doesn't mean it's right. Simple. But that doesn't mean that I'm a person who doesn't want to receive the truth. That's not what that means. It just means that the father has literally told me something else. So I can't, I can't accept what you're saying. I mean, you know, I just can't. It's nothing personal. It's just spiritual. There were people who felt like Job was wrong. And that's the reason why he was in his trial. His supposed friends came to him trying to comfort him. And all the while they were underlying, they were like saying that he was wrong somehow. They brought up old things that they felt like they knew about him. They brought up things that he did before. And we're trying to say that it's because of these things right here that you're going through this. Or they even used something that he said right in the time that they were conversing with him to say, see, that right there, that's why you're going through what you're going through. And Job was like, really? This y'all comforting? This is y'all comforting me? This is what, this is what friends do? Y'all, it would be better that y'all didn't even say anything <laughs> because you guys are just getting it wrong. And he may not have been able to completely explain to them why they were wrong about stuff. But Job in his heart knew, no, like, I know I'm a simple man, but I'm telling like, I, there, I didn't do anything at this particular juncture to deserve this. There's got to be something else going on here. But the people that's supposed to be his friends or that was supposed to be a listening ear or that was supposed to be comforting him was like, nah, bro, we got to tell you what you did wrong. And guess what? They were wrong. They said some real stuff. I'm not going to lie to you. And in any other situation, it would have been truth. But for this particular situation, it wasn't true. So people, you have to be careful when you're sharing the truth to people. It doesn't, and guess what? Your truth can still be the truth, but if it's not pertaining to their situation, then guess what? It still does not apply. It doesn't apply. So, you know, basically, there have been people who have, you know, judged and said that somebody don't want to hear the truth or somebody being prideful, but no, if God is dealing with somebody and he's already expressed 
to them something else is going on, then if you come, what you could be saying could very well be true, but it's just not true for their situation. You can't then turn around and say, oh, you just the person who don't want to hear the truth. That's not it. It's just this truth is not applying to their situation. And so then that makes it null and void. But, um, and we have to, be, and I think this is why I just want to get a little more like out of giving of myself like that, where I'm so personally attached because we can be guilty of calling somebody just, you could just really make somebody a straight sinner, like who don't love the Lord and who don't want him all because somebody doesn't, doesn't take some advice that you know is the truth. I mean, you can't do that because you'll be condemning people when the truth is, okay, listen, at that time, maybe they weren't ready to receive it. But if it's true and if it's something that God has for them to receive, he's going to give that increase for those people. And then you bad mouthing them, it doesn't help at all. And it makes it, it, it makes, I know for myself, it will make me question your love really for a person. Like if they don't receive something that you're saying that you may already know is true, but maybe it took them some time to get it just because they don't take it right when you say it, then you begin to bash them or accuse them of being somebody who's not trying to hear the truth. What good is your love? What good is your message at that point? If you're going to just bash them, it could seem as though you're only trying to prove a point and, and, and that's not of the most high that comes from. The Bible says in James chapter, I want to say three and eight somewhere is that comes from sensual and earthly wisdom and knowledge. And it's not of the father. If you're going to go back and forth with somebody because they don't take something that you say right away. Uh, and you say you're sharing out of love. I'm sorry. You might want to check yourself because love is not going to accuse somebody falsely. Love is not going to cause you to bring up some information that's personal that they may have shared with you in the past just to prove your point. If anybody do that, I don't care what nobody say. That's like throwing somebody under the bus. And that is definitely, that is a spitfire way or maybe a surefire way. <laughs> I'm sorry if I said that wrong, but that's a surefire way of getting someone not to listen to you. It's a blessing if they decide to go ahead and listen to you anyway. That's love, in my opinion, operating in them. But if you ever put out something that somebody has shared with you in, in private on a post that's more public, just to prove your truth or your point, I am sorry, there is no love in that. There is no love in that. At that point, you didn't, you, you're not caring about if you hurt them or not. You just trying to say, no, what I'm saying is true and what I'm saying is right. And that's not love. So please, people who are out here using Facebook to evangelize and, and to, to, to speak truth and to prophesy, be very careful about how you interact with people. Like, seriously, if it's love, if it's all love from you, that you should never accuse anybody of anything. And you certainly should never disclose information that they have shared with you in confidence to prove your point or to try to say, okay, now you just doing this because of this. You should never do anything like that. Anybody who does that, you cannot, then that means you can't prove your, your point. That's what that means. And, and truth be told, if, like I said in the beginning, if what you're saying is true, plant the seed and keep it moving. Do not accuse anybody of anything. Please don't, don't accuse nobody. Cause that's going to stir up strife. And again, do not bring out personal information that they've shared with you and say that this is the reason why they won't receive it. Baby, listen. If it wasn't for the love of the Lord that was working in my life, somebody did that to me. And I promise you, the old Jude who is a, who is one who, baby, I can defend a point to the death. Ask my mama. Ask my sisters and my brothers. They'll tell you. Ask my best friend. Ask my best friend. Okay, like I will be the one, I will be the one to, I will go on and on and on, or that used to be me. Like I can go on and on and on about why you, and I will be meticulous, honey, and break everything that you said down and then give you the response to it. But 
the most high has worked on me because he's shown me that these things come out of pride, out of lust of the flesh. If I love you, I'm not trying to hurt you when I bring forth this truth or when I share anything with you. So if you don't receive it, I would never say you're not receiving it because of where you are in your life right now. And if I've said it in the past, I would never say it again. I would never do that knowing what I know now. Because I'm a, I, you just you you should know how human beings operate and how they think and how they act. Nobody is going to listen to you if you straight throw them under the bus trying to prove your point who who is about to listen to you nobody only somebody who's actually trying to operate in the love of God is going to continue and then and may overlook that I overlooked it but it did bother me I couldn't believe that somebody would say that and especially when other people on the thread don't even know what's going they don't know everything and you just gonna put that out there like that that's not right y'all better y'all need to be careful if you call yourself evangelizing, the worst thing to do is to throw the person you're trying to evangelize under the bus trying to prove your point. You have defeated your whole ministry. You just defeated the purpose. You just did. I need you to know that. Please. Please, people. A lot of a lot of people who are trying to evangelize, you guys have to get your spirits right first. And you have to make sure that you yourself are coming from a sheer place of love. Okay, because you cannot throw the people you're trying to assist out of love under the bus. They will that'll never work. If anything, it, it with anybody that's still operating under the flesh, that's gonna make them put their walls up with you. And they may not even want to talk to you or deal with you anymore. And then you'll be trying to bad mouth them further. Bad mouthing and blessings cannot came they cannot come out of the same mouth. That's also in James. So please, people. If you're about God and you're about the love of God and bringing forth truth, you need to know how to do it in love. And you also need to understand that just because somebody does not agree with you right away does not automatically make them super evil and unworthy of the truth that you're bringing. Go sit down somewhere. Go get your attitude together before you try to evangelize to people. Because if you're going to badmouth them on the same thread that you're talking about you love them in and that's why you're sharing, uh, I think you need to check that love. With that being said, I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom. Love you guys. Bye-bye.